A horseshoe crab is a creature of consistency, changing very little despite being one of the oldest lineages still roaming this earth. But off the coast of New York, horseshoe crabs far larger than ever seen before were spotted for the first time earlier this year, potentially changing everything we know about these living fossils. Welcome to Cryptid Corner, the series All Things Cryptids, and today we are going to look into the giant Great South Bay horseshoe crabs. Today's topic takes us to Fire Island in New York, a narrow island that rests just south of Long Island and Great South Bay. This case is quite recent, as the sole source for these giants of the deep is an article from the Fire Island and Great South Bay news that was posted this year. Fire Island has been home to many odd stories, such as sunk ships, lost treasure, and even hauntings. But in March of 2025, several people from all walks of life would witness something far more tangible. On the evening of March 5th, a woman named Jem Patterson would be hiking between the Fire Island Lighthouse and the Coast Guard Station when she would witness the biggest goddamn crab she had ever seen in her life crawling up the shore. The sheer size of the domed creature first led Jem to believe it was a sea turtle, but as the waves washed back and revealed its true appearance, it was clear that this was a giant horseshoe crab. It was described as being longer than a surfboard and three times as wide as one, which would make it about eight feet long and five and a half feet wide. Additionally, the horseshoe crab's shell was not its typical brown coloration, instead being a neon yellow. Jem would try to pull out her phone to get a photo, but by the time she had got it ready, the crab had retreated back beneath the waves. The next sighting would be a fisherman named Bobby, just off the coast of Fire Island. Bobby would notice an odd shape moving by his boat, and as it snagged a hook on its shell, the might of the creature yanked the fishing pole right out of its holder. Now, fortunately for Bobby, this was his favorite pole, leaving him without proof of the creature and without his best fishing pole. A true tragedy. Many sightings would roll in over the month, and eventually a biologist for the Fire Island National Seashore, or Finns, would anonymously come forward with a sighting of not one, two giant horseshoe crabs. The two crabs were spotted in the shallow waters at dusk just off of the shore of Fire Island, one mounted atop the other, seemingly getting it on just after sunset. An interesting observation was that one of the horseshoe crabs was the reported neon yellow color, while the other was just the standard brown coloration. Over the month, more sightings would roll in, and they would be communicated with Dr. Henry Coleman, a marine biologist for the University of Point Pleasant, West Virginia, who specializes in horseshoe crabs. According to Dr. Coleman, these horseshoe crabs, which the article provides a taxonomic name of Limulus giganticus, had appeared on the island due to a change in climate and water quality, which has seen many other marine organisms such as sharks, dolphins, and whales to appear off the coast of Fire Island far more frequently, with their prey animals becoming more plentiful due to conservation efforts. It is also thought that the blood of these crabs can be used to cure diseases, and maybe even baldness, according to Dr. Coleman. Despite this, no sightings have come in after late March, and no scientist has been able to verifiably confirm the existence of these giant horseshoe crabs, leaving them a mysterious cryptid of the modern era. So just what are the giant horseshoe crabs of Great South Bay? Horseshoe crabs are interesting animals, being among some of the most ancient lineages to still roam this earth, with the oldest known horseshoe crab fossils dating back to 445 million years ago. And although they certainly have evolved over the years, modern horseshoe crab fossils have been found from 250 million years ago, not changing much over a span of time so long that dinosaurs have come and gone within it. The Atlantic Horseshoe Crab, which calls the East Coast home, 
tends to grow to about 2 feet in length, including the tail and weighing about 11 pounds, with females being the larger ones, feasting on mollusks, crustaceans, and even small fish. And the largest known horseshoe crab, the trispine or Chinese horseshoe crabs, can grow up to 2 feet 7 inches in length. Meanwhile, these giant horseshoe crabs, which exceed 8 feet in length, potentially not even counting the tail, eclipse all known horseshoe crabs both alive and extinct. Looking more into these odd creatures, they're not actually crabs, or crustaceans for that matter, instead being closer related to arachnids, and even closerly related to the long-extinct Eurypterids, a lineage of marine arthropods that ruled the oceans long ago, with many varying shapes and sizes. And I bring them up so often on my channel that at this rate I should just make a whole video covering them. I always love sea scorpions. But all the horseshoe crabs have not been found as large as 8 feet long. The Jackalopterus renaniae, the largest known Eurypterid, has. And horseshoe crabs are such an ancient lineage that they could hide a trick or two up their sleeves. With this being said though, it is time to reveal a detail that's going to ruin a lot of fun for this fascinating cryptid. With that detail being the date that the article was posted. April 1st, 2025. Yep, the whole thing was an April Fool's joke. Although, it is quite a good one, utilizing humorous reporting, horseshoe crab facts, and even some political satire. For starters, I tried to see if the marine biologist Dr. Coleman was real, and not only could I not find a Henry Coleman at the University of Point Pleasant, I couldn't even find a University of Point Pleasant, likely being made up as a nod to Point Pleasant's relevance in cryptid culture. And although this is way more of a stretch, I believe that the marine biologist having the last name of Coleman could be a nod to the great cryptozoologist Lauren Coleman. Despite this, not everything in this article is made up, as although giant horseshoe crabs haven't actually been spotted on Fire Island, marine life has become far more plentiful. Although the same cannot be said for the horseshoe crabs themselves, who are considered functionally extinct in the region, with their populations declining by the year at a rapid pace. This is due to unregulated harvesting of horseshoe crabs for bait and harvesting for their blue blood. Their blood is blue due to them containing a copper-based protein known as hemocyanin. But what is really important regarding their blood are cells known as amoebocytes, which are special for their ability to detect and nullify dangerous bacteria. These cells have been used in vaccines, IVs, and other treatments to prevent infections, saving countless lives, although likely not saving any hairlines. Sorry, Henry Coleman. Due to these factors, horseshoe crabs are sought after by pharmaceutical and fishing companies excessively, leading to population declines in this region which could cause harm to the coastal ecosystems, as the eggs of horseshoe crabs along with their juveniles serve as food for migratory birds and crustaceans while sharks, sea turtles, and other marine animals feast on the adults. And despite how horrible it would be if these living fossils went extinct, even regionally, New York Governor Kathy Hochul would veto a bill that would protect horseshoe crabs from overharvesting, basically putting the ball in the court for those who seek to benefit from said overharvesting. Despite better bait sources and synthetic alternatives being developed which could save thousands of horseshoe crabs. This is even mentioned in the article. But this wouldn't be the only jab at the government here, as the reason that the Finns biologist decided to report anonymously was due to fear of being a part of the mass layoffs, which saw countless government employees being suddenly booted from their line of work. These layoffs led to the termination of about a thousand National Park Service workers in February alone making it a very topical and pretty valid reason as to why they wouldn't come forward with such a cryptid encounter without verifiable evidence. 
And so it looks as if the giant great South Bay horseshoe crab, like many other cryptids, was just a newspaper hoax. Albeit a very clever one that utilizes the unique nature of horseshoe crabs and both state and federal shortcomings which could lead to real world horseshoe crab populations plummeting, which would devastate regional ecosystems as a whole, undoing what decades of coordinated efforts have achieved with the stroke of a pen. Despite this, the frequent requests for me to cover this case, along with a lot of online discourse regarding it, could imply that we are witnessing the birth of what could become a very popular local legend. On horseshoe crabs, though, it does feel kind of ironic that the creatures who are so ancient that they predate mammals, dinosaurs, reptiles, amphibians, flowers, and even trees was the one that changed the least overall. Perhaps, for prosperity, it is not the big things that truly matter, but the smaller things. After all, removing just the horseshoe crab from your shores could leave a larger gap in the food web than you could ever imagine. And likewise, a single signature could ensure their safety from those more interested in lining their pockets. And that's going to do it for the giant Great South Bay horseshoe crabs. This was a pretty interesting case to look into as it's a very recent one, be literally coming out this year, and it was recommended quite a bit in the comment section. So I'd figured I was going to save it for November because October was focused on the creepier cryptids, you know, the spooky season. And I remember in late September, I did look into this and I immediately saw it was from an April Fool's article. So I was like, ah, but then I kept reading the article and I really liked how the article, you know, even though it was kind of a satir satirical article, it did do a good job of informing, you know, the many struggles that horseshoe crabs actually face while also informing people, you know, on like how their blood is cool even though blood doesn't their blood doesn't outright cure diseases and definitely ain't gonna save you from male pattern baldness it does save a lot of lives by preventing infections and you know i just figured that i could still make a pretty good video out of this and it was recommended a lot so i figured i'd still do it but what do you think i should cover next make sure to comment down below i always read your recommendations even if I don't get to them right away, with this being a pretty good example of that, I will get them down at some point. I do got it on the list. Just be patient. I'll get to it. But again, thank you for watching. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like. If you like this content, make sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell so you are notified every time a cryptid upload or more come out. And of course, if you really, really, really like this content, you can become a member. For just $3 a month, you gain early access to videos, priority recommendations, a spot here on the member shout out section, and of course, you are a real one. But if you made it this far in the video, you are a real one regardless, and I'd like to again thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.